Hey guys, my name is Scoby. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play Sega Saturn games on your Android device. This is going to be a nice quick and easy tutorial. On screen right now you can see me playing some Sonic R. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing we're going to need to be able to do this is open up our web browser. In this case, I'm going to be using Google Chrome and we're going to be coming to this link. Links as always are in the description down below. And what we're going to be doing is searching for the current version. In this case, it's on the Play Store. But just in case it's not on the Play Store, what you can do is scroll down and see older versions right here. And we can download any of the older versions just in case. But in this case, since the app is already on the Play Store, what we're going to be doing is clicking open this button. And then we're going to be brought to the Play Store app. From this point, what you're going to want to do is install this app. In this case, I already have it installed, so it's no issue for me. And then we're going to be opening it up for the first time. Now, if this is your first time opening this app, it may ask for access to your phone storage. In this case, you are going to have to allow it because we're going to be needing to locate to and add our games a little bit later on. So I'd recommend adding this. And once this is done, we're pretty much ready to have our emulator set up. From this point, we are going to need a couple of other things to get our games going. So what I'd recommend doing is going back to your Play Store. And what we're going to be doing is going back to the home menu of our Play Store and we're going to be searching for Z Archiver. Now, Z Archiver is going to be a free extraction and compression software similar to 7-Zip or WinRAR on a PC. It's 100% free and I'd recommend having it on your Android device regardless. It's a really nice file explorer software. But what you're going to need to do is install this. We're going to be using it to extract our games a little bit later on. But now that we're on the topic of games, I am going to mention I'm not going to be showing you in today's video where to download games, but games are really, really easy to find. A quick Google search will help you out on this. But once you have your games downloaded, what you need to do is move them to a location where you can find them easily. And now we're going to be opening up our Z Archiver application and we're going to be locating to where we just downloaded our games. So in this case, for me, my games are my Sega Saturn folder. And what I have is my two games right here. So in this case, I have Resident Evil and I have Sonic R. Now both of these games are in two different file formats, so as you can see Resident Evil is in a .rar file and Sonic R is in a .zip file. So currently our emulator cannot run either of these files, so we are going to have to extract out both of these files into different formats. So it's actually readable by our emulator. So there's a couple different file formats that we can use and you can see both of these come in two different file formats. For Resident Evil we have a .bin and a .q file and for Sonic R we have a .mds and a .mdf. Now both of these file formats are compatible with our emulator. So what you're going to be doing is looking for one of these file types when you're actually downloading your game. If you get a different weird file type that comes with a lot of mp3 files, I'd recommend try downloading your game from another website or another source. Try get a format that matches the one on screen and it's as easy as that. So once you have your games downloaded to extract your games, what you're going to need to do is click on your game. We can simply click extract here with Z archiver or extract dot 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 if you wish to extract to a new location. In this case, I'm going to be extracting here as an example. So since I've already previously extracted my games, what I'm going to be doing is just replacing all the old files with the new files. They're going to be exactly the same, so it's going to work either way. But you are going to have to do this with your games. Like I said, if they come in a dot rar or dot zip file, we are going to have to extract them so that they can work with our emulator. So once this is done, what we're going to be doing is coming back to our emulator. Then we're going to be setting up a couple more things to link to our games. And I'm going to be showing you some settings that you can do to make the games more compatible and make them run more smoothly. So what we're going to be doing is clicking on our burger menu on the top left to open up our menu. We're going to be clicking on the settings option. And then from here, we're going to have a bunch of different settings that we can play around with. So the first thing we're going to be doing is selecting game directory on the very top. And what we're going to be doing is opening this up and we're going to be clicking the add button to add a new game directory to locate to where our games are currently downloaded. So I would recommend creating a new folder just so you can store all your games easily. But of course, you can put them wherever you would like. So all you need to do is go through this process and just locate to where your games are currently installed. So for me, they're in my Sega Saturn folder. Click the folder you want. Click select directory and then it will be added to this list. So currently I have two Sega Saturn folders right here. It doesn't really matter too much, so I'm going to be clicking OK, and then my games are going to be added to here. Now if we back out of the menu options and come to our home screen, your game should now be listed here if you have any in your directory. If not, what we can do is click on the menu on the top left one more time, click refresh game list, and then it's going to refresh and find all the games in your selected directories. Now if you have a couple of directories, you may want to refresh a few times just to make sure everything shows up. And like I said, you do need to extract your games for them to show up here. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And once you have your games here, you can easily load up and click and play and start any of your games. In this case, I'm going to be using Resident Evil as an example. And as you can see, when I start to play, it instantly starts to load up and work no problem. In this case, I'm going to be backing out because I'm going to be showing some more settings. So to back out of a game, what you can do is press the back button on your Android device. This slight little menu will open up and we can simply click the exit button, which is going to bring us back to the home menu of our device. 
it is going to ask if you wish to donate and if you're going to be using this app a lot i would recommend donating to support the creator in this case what we're going to be doing is backing out a little bit more and now we're going to be looking at a couple more settings what we're going to be doing is going back to our burger menu on the top left again we're going to be clicking on the settings option and we're going to be looking at a couple more things now one setting I would recommend experimenting around with if you're having a lot of issues trying to run games is the graphics core or in this case the video core here under the graphics option. I'd recommend adjusting from OpenGL to software video interface and experimenting to see what offers the best results. In this case for example Sonic R would not run using the software video interface but OpenGL seemed to work fine with it. I got a lot of glitches. We have a couple of other options below like showing FPS, frame skipping and a couple of other things. So I would recommend experimenting around with these seeing what works best for you. But other than that I'd recommend leaving the most things at default. One thing I would like to mention though is to leave the cartridge on none and that's the best settings I found for the games I was trying to play. But if you need to experiment around a little bit, feel free. But overall, the simulator was pretty stable for me. I didn't really have any issues trying to run the select games I tried. In this case, I'm going to be opening up Sonic R one more time. And I'm going to be playing it out till the end of this video. It works pretty well. And overall, this emulator is pretty stable despite having some bad scores on the Play Store. The only real downside is the fact that the on-screen buttons are kind of cramped. It's not exactly the nicest layout for this, but you can't really do it in a lot of other ways. So I would recommend an external or Bluetooth controller, which you can set up in the settings also. It's also really, really easy to do. But for me, the two games I tested in this case, which were Resident Evil and Sonic R, worked really, really well. And it's as easy as that to play Sega Saturn games on your Android device. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.